Welcome back. Did you know that on April 3rd, 1874, a small group of ladies in Glencoe, Illinois, which is a lakeside village on the North Shore of Chicago, formed the Women's Library Club to promote intellectual and social improvement in the area. The club meetings followed a similar program for many years, one hour devoted to reading a popular, uh, to reading and discussing classical novels, sorry, history and anything else that was of immediate interest, followed by an hour for enjoying a popular book. Sounds like the perfect get together as long as there's either wine or margaritas. In 1876, the group took up the study of architecture, which ultimately led them to envision what would soon be their future clubhouse. The women often sewed during meetings as well. And in 1878, they even handmade clothes to give as Christmas presents for low income students. Basically, it was women doing good wherever they could. And it was perfect for the time. And it was part of a new movement of women's clubs. 2024 is the WLC's 150th birthday. That's the sesquicentennial year, a word I did not know until I learned about WLC's 150th birthday. It's their big celebration as one of the oldest ongoing women's clubs in the country. While WLC has changed over the years to meet the needs of their community, it's held strong to the commitment of philanthropy, education, and friendship. Now, I know a lot of our viewers originally hail from the Chicago area or visit there often, and WLC is one of the mainstays. It's a very, very historical, wonderful piece of Chicago area history. And with us today to share more on the celebration and all about WLC is Jennifer Parkinson, WLC's current president. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lauren, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I will tell the audience that Jennifer and I have been best friends for about 30 years. And we started as young image consultants together and have evolved into whatever we're doing today. But what, what WLC epitomizes for me is that women grow and evolve and we then bring up the next generation of women to grow and evolve with us. No one embodies that message for me in my life more than Jennifer. So I really, really want to offer Jennifer to you as someone who has had major impact in every day of my life for many, many years. And the work she's doing now is impacting hundreds, if not thousands of more women and men across the country. Jen, tell me what what uh, drew you to WLC? Because you aren't originally from Chicago. No, I moved here 15 years ago with my two children, dog and cat, and knew one person. Um, and I was trying to figure out, hmm, what am I going to do here? I had a very strong business, as you know, in New York City. And um, I had to raise these two children on my own. So I decided to sell clothing. And um, one of those brands also did fundraisers. So I went to the WLC board meeting to see if I could have a fundraiser for them. And instead of having a fundraiser for them, the president asked me if I would mind sitting down and being the secretary for the day, which evolved into me being part of this club. When I first joined, uh, we were in our original clubhouse, or should I say our second clubhouse, um, but the one that we had for most of our lifespan. And um, there was a theater there. So of course, I've always loved the theater, wanted to be an actress when I was young, as you know, and uh, met a lot of interesting people and it became my community. So it was a wonderful way for me to fit into the community and do good at the same time. And you have grown that exponentially because at the time the club was smaller, right? It wasn't, it, and it wasn't at all in the iteration that you have it now. No, at the time the club had a lot of more senior members. Um, they 
had a luncheon every month. They had a bridge game every month. They had a book club every month. Um, and as I became stronger and stronger and became president, like by accident, um, we started doing other things. We did uh, trips downtown to see the SNL exhibit. We did evening programs and outings. And we have started to get, after the pandemic, a younger group of people as well. So now the club has ages in their 30s all the way up till their 80s. And the women who are older, many of them have been members forever and ever. Um, many years ago, um, the club had a daytime group and an evening group. So the women who worked came at night and the women who were housewives and stayed home came during the day. And they had two presidents and actually two boards. Um, clearly today we've evolved and grown and now we just have programs for all different types of people. And we have people from all over the North Shore, from all the way down to Evanston, all the way up to Lake Forest and um, all the way Northwest to, to Wheaton. So we have people from all different communities now. So 150 years is something. And whether you're one of the oldest or in fact the oldest consistently running women's club in the country, at a time when clubs and social gatherings are struggling to actually pull groups together, you are able to engage, like you said, from 30s to 80s, and you've started to include men, which was a big step there too. But how how are you celebrating this this milestone? I think by growing the organization, we um, used to have, as I'm sure many many towns had, a newcomers club, which we no longer had, and so we have now become the newcomers club of the North Shore. So many people after the pandemic moved up here, so we um, celebrate by bringing people together um, and doing things of, for all different types of people. In the spring, we had a prom for adults and we had about 70 people. We had a queen and king. And of course that was also to do good. Uh, there was a place in uh, Lake Forest that has a store every year. They work with a dry cleaners here, Ziegler's, and they collect people's gowns and dresses and then once a year, they give open their store to girls and boys going to prom and everything is free. They take their photo, they do their hair, uh, they, do folk, they do makeup for them. So we ask people to bring their clothes with them. Um, they could have taken them off, but fortunately they wore something else, but we all had a great time. Um, so next week we're having a fashion show that's to raise money for a company called Kurtz Cafe, where a woman, Susan Teichman, sold her home and decided to open a place to help uh, at-risk youths, people getting out of uh, foster care up to age 24. She teaches them everything about the hospitality industry. So when they leave her, they know how to use computers, how to wait on people, how to bake, how to cook, all sorts of things. So it's really incredible what all of these people do for others. And that is one of the aspects of WLC that has continued, the doing good and making sure that the connection to the community is strong. I know you raise money and donate and gift to a lot of local organizations, but you also are part of the Writers' Theater. Yes, that came about because the home that we had was very large and Michael Halberstein, a very talented man, decided to start a theater in the local bookstore in Glencoe, the owner of which was a member of WLC. And she created a small theater in the back of her store. And then he got together with the women at our club and um, created a theater inside our club, along with everything else that we had. 
And it became so popular that the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times would come and review the shows there. And our building was becoming in disrepair and together the board and Michael and Writers Theater Board decided to take over, demolish our building and get a very fabulous architect, the Genie Gang Group, who's done quite a lot of buildings, um, very unusual, to create a new building for us. And we share the space. So the land is ours and the building belongs to Writers Theater. And they have won many awards and uh, around the country, not only for their theater, but also because it is a completely green building. When they broke down our building, they took all the bricks from the outside of the building and put them in the theater to utilize on the walls so that lights can come through the bricks, you know, there are little holes. It's really quite remarkable, along with taking the trees from the property, anything that they could keep, they put into this new fabulous award-winning building. What would be your vision for the next, I won't say 150 years, let's start with the next five years for WLC? Yeah, I haven't found that uh, fountain of youth youth yet, but I'll keep looking. Um, I would say that to continue growing the community, one thing that we had found is different people have different needs and we have a lot of extremely interesting, educated, curious people, writers, artists, musicians, mothers, fathers, you know, bankers, every type of person you can imagine and they've really formed a community. So when someone is in need, someone is sick, or someone's spouse dies, they have a community they can look to. And I think that's what we want to grow. We want to find out what people's needs are in this time in our lives. Um, we also want to broaden the minds of people and broaden their critical thinking about the world today and talk about, you know, things that are popular and that are not popular so that people can form their own uh, views on the world and have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Much like the ladies did in 1874. Exactly. You know, they did help get the women's vote in Illinois. We owe and a lot to those ladies. Yes, we do. Um, and so let me ask you where, if people want to find more information, because again, Many of our viewers originated from the Chicago area, still have family there, come back to visit. They might like to check you guys out. Where can they find out more? WLCNorthShore.org. And they can also go to Writers Theater uh, if they wanna see what's coming up for Writers Theater. But our um, information is at WLC North Shore, and they can always email us or call if they wanna have questions. Or if there's an interesting speaker out there, who has something to say, we would love you to donate your time and come and have a cocktail party or a luncheon or a dinner or a breakfast. We'd love to meet you. Sky's the limit. You do everything the you limit. possibly can to make it a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for coming to share with us today, Jennifer Parkinson, WLC North Shore, and we'll be right back.